Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen? Piglet here once again, and I'm back for some more of yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more as play of Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker for the Nintendo Wii U, Nintendo Switch, and of course, Nintendo 3DS. So, yeah, last time we actually did manage to complete done with both versions of the game, of the Wii U version of the Super Mario 3D World levels, and in this case, Nintendo slash the 3DS versions. Super Mario Odyssey Kingdoms, and even then though, despite the fact there's actually a first time I've actually just managed to breezily uh, go for those stages in the Switch version, but usually sometimes I found out that, that that level right there can get a bit of a struggle, especially noticeable with that mission objective and stuff, so even then, yeah, as far as I can usually say about this, other than that, so... Yeah, today for this episode, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that we're going to be still continuing on with the forms of the bonus books and able to actually go through, like, the majority of the levels from different categories, as you can see right there, that we have to, uh, I think we should be able to have some time to able to actually do, like, uh, three different objectives. So, let's go get this thing started to able to go through Toad Brigade. So, in this case, the first level we're going to be jumping into, Toad Brigade to Mushroom Mesa. So, even then, um... Basically, this is how the Toad Brigade missions themselves actually works out. It's basically that you know how the fact that we've already gone through most of the levels of the game since the past, but now we have to do this with a different mechanic of the game, or in this case, in different mechanics of those kinds of stages. And uh, now we need to able to actually just take uh, not only one, but four of those, uh, well, three other types to be exact, because there is actually a number platform until you're able to actually decide to go ahead and go up. See, for then, though, that's how this mission objective is, as far as this will go. See, for then, um, I'm pretty sure that we can able to only do, uh, let's just say, four levels of these kinds of, like, uh, uh, objectives of any sort. But even then, or in this case, some of those mechanics throughout. So even then, uh, thankfully though, missions in mind, or in this case, one of those missions in the forms of the later stages, in the forms of the bonus books, uh, we don't have to worry about, but in forms of getting hit and all that stuff. So the, the majority of it is going to be most likely focusing on... See, Fernando, that, um, take this level, for example, that the bonus objective in this particular level is the fact that we need to collect about, let's just say, about 90 coins. See, Fernando, but as soon as you're able to actually collect those 90 coins, then you would able to actually classify, to able to actually get ourselves your mission accomplished and stuff. If you manage to let your Toad, uh, friends get hit right there, because as you can see, that is a one-hit death. See, Fernando, that's, um... You know, you, do, you really don't want to let your uh, uh, blue toad or yellow toad or even green toad get hit by enemies because if they do, well, chances are that is an instant death. Or well, in this case, you know, just one hit KO. See, Fernando. Well, it doesn't matter for Captain Toad because obviously he can get hit like twice. See, Fernando, they're expecting you would be safe at this point, but. You need to be sure you need to actually let these toads manage to get itself alive. So because of that, uh, if you do not manage to make them alive, then obviously your objective or your, you know, this level in particular, you have to redo the entire level again. And plus with no checkpoints whatsoever as far as the rest of the game. Um, well, the only exception by the forms of the Wingo Watchtowers and stuff like that, especially with the Battle uh, Tower Blitz and stuff like that. But, um... Usually for the normal regular levels, they seem to do not contain any of those checkpoints, so... So yeah, today was actually forms of uh, the 5th of October, in this case in 2018. So naturally speaking, that how the fact of the matter is though, is the fact that today, that um, Super Mario Party has been just recently released today. In new forms of Nintendo Switch, and especially noticeable for every single territory. See, so then though, uh, as far as the actual reviews of critics and fans, it's actually gotten way more um, good than the likes of how it does it in Mario Party 10, and especially noticeable with uh, Mario Party uh, the Top 100 for the 3DS and Mario Party Island Tour. Well, it might actually retain some of the problems like the forms of the uh, the lackluster online mode and stuff like that, which I do give the credits to for able to actually just have introduced online for the very first time in a Mario Party series, which I do appreciate. But however though, just like in Mario and Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games for the Nintendo Wii U, uh, the online features is pretty much limited for the most part though, so even then, no, it's kind of like that, so even then, yeah. 
And yeah, basically we need to collect 90 coins on that mission, by the way. So let's move on to the next level of the Toad Brigade missions. And that's the forms of Toad Brigade to Trick Track Hall. So yeah, let's get to it, shall we? Alright, uh, I wonder if how we can able to actually just go ahead. I might be very curious of how the fact that if there might be something from onto that platform over there in case that there is actually a little bit of a hidden item right there. So let's just double You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be joking me. Alright, hopefully I can able to actually just go ahead and just dodge that little um, enemy over there and uh, let's go ahead and chuck it. Ah, oh, I did not mean to do that. Oh, I forgot about that technique. So, whoops. Oh well, uh, yeah, let's try this again, and I do apologize if that little jump cuts right there is because, well, since then we haven't really, I haven't really touched this game ever since and the likes of about three months ago at this point. So naturally speaking, how the fact that, um, yeah, because speaking of which, it has been a very, very long time since we actually got to come back into this game as far as the actual let's play and even the actual playing the game itself, obviously. Now, I haven't really played that much on the Wii U version, but though I, I will get back into that version of um, my own time. Especially noticeable with the forms of the, uh, you know, the hide and seek pixel, to, uh, pixel toad, and the forms of the amiibo functionality of that version. Whilst the forms of the Switch and the 3DS versions, they instantly manage to able to unlock those mini games once you're able to actually beat the levels at least once. So. Yeah, that's as far as you might as well think about for ourselves for this point in time. So, anyways though, so let's go ahead and just uh, toss that enemy over there. And, uh, because if you couldn't tell already, because of how the way, how the fact of the matter is though, is that I seem to able to actually feel a little bit, uh, feel a bit rusty when it comes to, like, uh, going back to this game again. Because, you know, it's been three months since I've actually managed to come back into this game ever since, well during the summer break because obviously because of how the fact that we most likely concentrate on the forms of the you know the Mega Man games marathon that we did master did done like Mega Man games 1 through 10 including Mega Man and base well Bandai Wonders 1 game doesn't really count honestly although I really wish I loved to able to actually tackle for that game but um, the only way you can able to play that is the forms of the English translation of the game but he forms of the emulator and stuff like that, or in this case, obtaining the forms of the Bandai Wonderswan Color, or in this case, the Bandai Wonderswan Console handheld. But the thing is, though, is the fact that uh, it does have a pretty much uh, have a uh, lackiness when it comes to like uh, brightness, especially with the contrast and everything. So I think that's the only problem I have with the forms of the Bandai Wonderswan, so even then, though, especially in color. But not that grass. So anyways though, um, obviously most of the levels have been, uh, uh, slightly heavily influenced from the past, uh, you know, the past, um, stages ever since during the likes have been episodes 1, 2, and 3, but, uh, the only major difference is, is the fact that, uh, we got to do a, uh, a little bit of a forced task, like for instance, in the forms of the previous level that we've did done, but in forms of Toad Brigade at, um, you know, Mushroom Mesa, which is actually based off from the fourth level in the forms of um, episode one book. And I believe this level is actually uh, heavily based off from, uh, I would say, level 24 in the forms of an episode three book. And then once we get to the next level, which um, I'm probably not going to mention about that right about now, because obviously we need to able to gather around, uh, you know, as many toes as, as far as we could. And then that way we could able to drop down here, because again, if you manage to let those, uh, either of those toads get hit by the forms of spikes or enemies, um, basically you just have to like, uh, be very cautious and you have to be very careful with this, because obviously, if you, you know, if you manage to let your, one of your toads get, um, hurt and everything, like an instant death and stuff like that, uh, you have to redo the entire level again, so, of course there's a way you can able to go back, but I'm probably not gonna do that, because obviously, we've already gone through the main level as it is, even then though, Oh, wait a minute, I just realized. I'm actually missing on something, actually, because I believe, uh, much like any forms of how it does it in every single level at this point in time, um, there might be a very well-hidden golden mushroom in here somewhere, so... Yeah, since I've uh, only collected 105 coins, so... Yeah, I was like 45 off, so... Yeah, I'll meet you guys back with the forms of the successful attempt on the forms of the actual mission itself. Alright, so this is what you're supposed to do when it comes to like, 
Well, you've all, you obviously already know about the forms of the actual love war itself, as you can clearly see on here. Because basically, in order to actually get ourselves the mission objective uh, completionist, when it comes to like, uh, this stage itself, is the fact that obviously not only do you need to able to actually just, uh, um, collect as many coins as possible, but he forms the veggie um, plankers or something like that. And especially knows the board that first things first, to make the journey itself to be a lot easier, is the fact that I highly suggest you able to get rid of the enemies first, before you're able to actually just decide to take uh, one of the three toads that you have to able to carry through, or in this case, just tack along with you. And, uh, because of that, though, just make these, uh, to make this journey a lot more easier with this level itself. So, if that's the case, then you probably should be able to recognize that at this point. So anyways, let's unplug here and get the key, but uh, we need to keep a hold of the key. And because of that, uh, as long as you're able to know what you're doing with the actual love war itself, you would be fine for the most part though, up until the fourth or the third love war, if I remember for that uh, one particular moment, that it can get a lot of trial and error situations, especially noticeable how the fact that well, the game is very still generous when it comes to extra lives, as you can see, because I've only got ourselves like, um, 87 lives at this point. So naturally speaking, that because of how the way the fact of the matter is, though, that the game itself is really, really easy when it comes to ranking up lives and stuff. But, either way though. So obviously I'm gonna show you guys the actual main level again, in case if, uh, if you guys have sort of missed out correctly, even by the forms of like, uh, trying to go for every single coins and stuff, and also you really can't afford to get hit if you really want to get yourselves your uh, coins count high. Because of that, though, if you really want to able to actually get yourselves uh, ten more coins without taking any damage, then you would able to actually just to guarantee you would able to actually just accomplish with this mission no problem. But uh, also you need to be very careful of is obviously the actual hazards itself. So. And I believe the golden mushroom is actually hiding around here. So I accidentally just actually bypassing it completely. So yeah, because I'm still I'm still a little bit too rusty when it comes to getting back into this game, honestly, because obviously with the forms that the Mega Man 11, uh, or in this case, uh, the Mega Man Marathon that we did manage to tackle through, but it forms about, uh, I would say two months ago at this point now, ever since in June and likes it in August, and especially recently, that yesterday, I've recently finished up with the forms of the next next Kirby Let's Play of games, but the forms of Kirby's Epic Yon recently, Stephen Nan. Um, yeah, that's what I can really think about. Stephen Nan, though, it's about time for me to able to actually finally coming back into the forms of Captain Toad Treasure Tracker before you're able to finish off with this Let's Play before you do... I don't know, even more Nintendo Switch Let's Play. So anyways, now let's move on to Toad Brigade 2 Bullet Bill Base, which is actually based off from, um, I'm assuming one of the levels in the forms of, um, let's just say, uh, Book 1, if I remember correctly. Although I may be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's one of them. So, anyways though, let's get this thing to it. Alright, we have to be very careful right there, because obviously the whole fact that this particular moving platform right there, I weren't able to actually just go ahead and, yeah, I, why do I do that? Oh, I'm such a fool. <sighs> Alright, need to be very careful, just make sure we don't get hit by bullet bills, obviously, so. Yeah, when you fail out this little moments whenever you're trying to instantly get hit right there, that was, that was baloney. Anyways, let's try this again, and uh, hopefully we can able to get this in there, a little bit of a... A better attempt this time, because even though if you clearly see that I do apologize if my jump cuts was actually common at these days, because normally because of the trial and error moments like this are still present in the forms of the final points of the game, which is very understandable because of the challenge itself will eventually will increase. And um, especially noticeable how the fact that it, I found it very, very hard to able to get back into this game at one point or another, because uh, you know that little pointer thingy right there, which is only exclusive to the uh, the Switch version? That, um, in order to actually just manage to recalibrate it itself, is by simply we need to able to press the plus button instead of the minus button, because the minus button acts like a, uh, you know, the pause menu and stuff like that. So even then, uh, I would expect you to see how the mechanics are looks like, so anyways. So, um, there's another thing I just want to point things out right away, is the fact that, um, uh, not only because of the forms of, I've already mentioned about the, uh, the Super Mario Party game for quite a long time, actually. 
uh, at least ever since new forms of uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn Let's Play and stuff like that. And Eva especially knows about that. You know, Knuckles already mentioned about the rest of this stuff and new forms of in uh, Pac-Man Party and stuff like that. So, anyways, let's go ahead and just spin that wheel. In, in fact, uh, this might be very tricky of the level for those of you able to actually just try excuse me, that uh, if you really want to able to actually just uh, keep these toads safe, then obviously you don't want to let the bullet bills try to kill you, or even especially kill one of the toads, because, you know, if that's been happening, then obviously you have to do redo the entire level over and over again, and, you know, to get the drill. In fact, because of the um, this video's concerned, even in the forms of the next video after this, um, this might actually be one of those emphasis to have the fact that I might as well able to show off the failure montages most of the time with most of the levels. Even for some segments, I always attempt to screw over one. And, uh, well, even then, no, that's as far as I can usually say about this. So there's the yellow toad right there. So hopefully we could able to actually just bypassing this completely without even falling off to the lava by complete accident for my first attempt. So, yeah, you get the draw for this point. So you have to, like... You know, keep these uh, three different colored toads alive, because if one of them gets hurt by the forms of the enemies, you'll instantly lose a life. So, yeah, it's just, you have to worry about a multitude of things, obviously. So, And obviously, the bonus objective in this particular level is the fact that I'm pretty sure we need to collect about, let's just say, 100 coins. So, because the other one I did done, where the forms of the previous level that we've done, that um, we need to collect about roughly 150 coins, which I did accidentally failed on that. Um, first attempt, as far as you already know, and um, I must have done this on a better run. So, anyways, we need to be very careful right there in case if we don't get hit by those uh, bullet bills from either each side. So, anyways, let's hop into that number four platform in case if we're about to be getting ourselves the forms of the power star itself. So, yeah, that's how it goes, obviously. Now, obviously, you're going to be playing as Captain Toad for the majority of the forms of the, uh, the Toad Brigade missions, just like in the forms of the Super Mario 3D World levels, and especially noticeable with the forms of, uh, you know, the Super Mario Odyssey levels for the, you know, the Switch and the 3DS version. So, now let's move on to the final stage of the forms of the Toad Brigade set of missions, or in this case, stages, rather, and that's the forms of Toad Brigade to Cooper Keep. Oh, no, not Cooper Keep, uh, Chemic Keep, that's what I meant to say. Whilst the forms of the North American version, this normally says Toad Brigade at Magic Cooper's Keep, because obviously, just like in the forms of Mario Party 9, how uh, the fact that uh, Chemic's name actually little, uh, is actually a little bit more different uh, between the PAL version of the forms of Mario Party 9, and especially noticeable with the forms of the American version of Mario Party 9 as well, so... Yeah, that's how it goes, obviously, though, so, yeah, I really do apologize if my voice has gone a little bit rusty around at this point, because it's it's really kind of hard to able to get back into this game, honestly, because I was more accustomed to the forms of, like, focusing on the forms of one Let's Play at a time, rather than just doing multitude of Let's Plays all in one go, but I digress. And by the way, if you ever play this level in the forms of the Switch version, it actually makes things a lot more easier because obviously, because the way the pointer itself actually works out, uh, basically you can able to actually stun, or in this case, just trying to able to stop the actual enemy's movements, like Chemic, for example. And thankfully, though, there aren't any piranha plants on the forms of, unlike the ones in the forms of. Uh, I'm assuming this level is actually based off from uh, also from Episode Three book, but in the forms of in level 18 where normally Toadette was actually normally play this level, so even then, um, obviously because of the way, I'm presuming they, uh, they did manage to completely ignore uh, most of the levels uh, revisits of, uh, ever since they're doing the likes of in episode 2, so they're most likely focusing on the levels, or some of the levels from, well, episodes 1 and 3. Well, I don't know why it truly must admit it though, but hey, at least it's, that's how it usually happens in most uh, game designer sometimes. So anyways So yeah, this level wasn't so bad as long as you're able to actually just need to able to keep your uh, Multitude of toads alive even by the forms if it again if one of them gets hurt by the forms of the enemy contrast and stuff like that Well, obviously you have to do redo the entire level over and over again in case if you uh, Don't want to get some bit of trial and error moments here. So let's activate that 
you know, the P-Switch once again in case if this little uh, tower thingy decides to able to go ahead and just change it around a little bit. In fact, I was quite shocking about this actually, because we've almost nearly towards the end of this Let's Play itself, although uh, there are still some more things to tackle through. The only thing I'm probably not going to do at this point is the forms of the time, at uh, time, attack, cha uh, time attack challenges and stuff like that, because um, obviously it, I don't think that will be kind of a... It might be something to do with the 100% completionist still, but uh, I'm probably not going to bother to able to do that. Other than... Uh, there's actually a reward you can able to actually just about to get if you manage to able to do the time-based challenges, which even then, uh, that's the only thing I'm probably not gonna do because I might not do the entire, uh, might n not do these uh, levels over and over again in case if I manage to beat my own record and stuff like that. But that's how I think it is. So, anyways, though, um, aside from that, though, obviously we still got some plenty of levels to go through in the forms of the bonus books and stuff like that. And especially noticeable with the forms of the hide and seek uh, pixel toad levels and stuff like that, which again it only be placed in the forms of episodes one, two, and three. Whilst the forms of the bonus books, on the other hand, though, does not really count. Other than, well, because the reason why they're doing this is because, well, it 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 obviously takes you into the exact same places as the normal uh, book run-throughs and stuff like that, which is very obvious. Oh, I. You two are. Something else, I'm telling you. You are really something else. So anyways, uh, okay, so I believe that's pretty much it for the most part, though. So here's the final section of this level, is that we need to deal with uh, two of those Chemex, uh, as opposed to three, only in forms of the normal regular level. So, oh, I was about... <sighs> you got to be kidding me. Alright, I'm hoping I can able to actually just go ahead and just... You freaking little... Let's try this again. Anyway, we need to able to defeat two of those chemics in case if you want to able to free out the yellow toad and stuff like that. Fuck. All right. So this might be the uh, the fourth time or the third time's a charm for this run. And yes, I still got the exact same amount of coins. Now, what makes this a little bit trickier, as far as you can clearly tell, that I constantly died on this part is because, well, my depth perception has got a little bit lacking, either by the forms of the actual camera perspectives and stuff like that, but other than that though, as soon as you deal with the forms of the only two Chemex, then you were able to finish off the main level, so... Yeah, that was about it, by the forms of the Toad Brigade missions, and yeah. So naturally, again, there are only four of those levels, so yeah, and the bonus objective in this one is that we need to collect about 240 coins, so... Yeah, that's that done, and now let's move on to the forms of the next section of the bonus book, which we have Curse of the Mummy Me. So here we have Mummy Me on Flip Panel Footpath, and this will require 165 gems to able to collect. And this time around though, we're most likely going to be playing as Toadette the entire time, instead of Captain Toad. So, yeah, let's get to it. On to you, Captain... you know. Alright, I need to able to just carefully have to like... Alright, hopefully I... Ah, oh, I, I forgot to move the camera. That was my fault. That's definitely my fault. Alright, um, and let's just wait for a moment. And it, I don't know if it's... I don't, I don't think there's anything possible we can do this though. Because, yeah, I don't think I can able to backtrack for a bit, so... Oh well, we'll uh, try this again. Okay. Oh, what do I do that? Oh, 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 I'm an idiot. <sighs> okay, uh, well, we're gonna have to try this again, shall we? So, yeah, but again, power of um, editing software as far as you're more already aware. So, yeah, I believe this level was actually somewhat of a based off from. Um, I'm assuming it's actually based off from um, level. I can't remember which level that was actually based off from, I wonder, but I, I do know it might be something related to uh, episode 1 um, selection of stages or something, although I may be wrong about that, but I might as well able to actually look it up until now, but um, anyway, so basically in this level as far as this is concerned, it's basically it's like the exact same level as the forms of one of the levels from, you know, from the past, except the fact that um, 
Well, obviously there's no gems to collect this time around though, and in addition to that, um, there are, um, like, let's just say, you know, there's a mummy me trying to able to go after you, so... Yeah, for that particular alcove right there, always having a hard time trying to deal with this, because obviously if I accidentally fall off, when it comes to, like, you know, trying to able to fell down from here, um, obviously I might as well able to redo the entire level over and over again, it would just not that fun. But, either way though, unless the level itself is significantly shorter as far as I was expecting it to, but these of all depends on the actual skills involved, so... Yeah, with the other uh, bullet bill base, that was actually based off from um, level 9, if I recall correctly, by the forms of, you know, that uh, Toad Brigade level that we've did done? So, naturally, that's all I could really count it for, really, though, so... I really don't think that this level was actually based off from one of those levels in, uh, episode 1, I think. I believe it was actually, like, uh, episode 3, for this matter. See, so Benendo, because of how the way the fact that most of the levels in your forms of episode 3 can get pretty tricky at times, well, not so much as difficult as the ones after that. I believe this is actually based off from level 11 in your forms of in episode 3. So, if that's the case, then, yeah. As for the other two levels that we can actually get into, and by the way, the mission objective in this one is to collect about 160 coins, so... Next that we have is Mummy Me on Drop Road Dash, so... This one is actually, um, based off from Episode 1 levels, in the forms of, well, let's just say level 15, but, uh, you know... Okay, just need to be very careful at this point, hopefully I won't screw this up, even though it might be very tricky because that happens, because, you know, there's not enough space to able to move around. Okay, let's give me some coins. I'm a little bit more insu insufficient with this, but I did that really. God. Okay, uh, third time's a charm then. So anyways, uh, this level plays exactly like the informs of how it does it in level 15 in episode 1 book, except the fact that it's all in a grey looking, uh, stormy clouds environment, as you can tell from that point. And obviously the noticeable differences between the normal, uh, level 15, uh, drop road dash level, as, in, as opposed to the ones in this level, is the fact that obviously you need to worry about by the forms of the mummy me itself. And then you still need to worry about buddy forms of those donuts platforms and stuff. Even especially noticeable with these little parabot enemies as, as well. So you get a drill for this point. So and obviously I believe the objective in this one is the fact that when it comes to the mission objective in this one is the fact that we need to able to collect about let's just say 190 coins in this level. So even then it might be very challenging, but I'm assuming I can able to actually just hopefully try to cope with this. Alright, so I'm not doing too bad. And obviously, that the forms that they have little pointer right there is super recommendable, because it's especially noticeable if you want to able to look up on, you know, pretty much every single coin that you need to find. So, anyways, uh, this final part can get pretty tricky, especially with this little zigzag formation, and hopefully we can able to actually get ourselves the rest of the remaining coins. I was one off to get the next one up, and especially noticeable with that, uh, you know, the 200 coin mark. Oh well, no big deal, but hey, at least we've done the mission itself, so... Anyways though, I believe we're now on to the final level when it comes to the Mummy Me levels from now on. And that's the forms of the Mummy Me at the Poil Path Peak, which is actually based off from, you know, in level... Um... I would say level 10 in the forms of Episode 1 book. Except the noticeable difference is this time around though, is the fact that obviously we need to worry about is the forms of the Mummy Me, him Mummy Me himself. So anyways, let's get to this, shall we? I'm assuming this level won't be as long as the other ones were, I was hoping for, so anyways. Alright, so, uh, I believe, when it comes to the mission objective in this one though, is that I'm pretty sure we need to collect about 170 coins, and that was a mistake. <laughs> I did not notice that that was there, but um, at least I was expecting if I need to dodge every single part of him, even by the forms of the Dragonade and stuff like that, well, except for this unexpected um, fireball to dodge through, but hey, we'll try that, we'll try that again. 
Uh, annoying thing about uh, annoying thing about this today is the fact that obviously most likely forms of every single Let's Player at this point. My microphone still keeps on disconnecting it itself. Like I didn't touch it or anything. Heck, I don't even like uh, fiddle around with it or anything. It just sometimes it just just keeps on disconnecting it all by itself. Or maybe it's probably because of the loose circuits and stuff. I'm pretty sure that's what how this usually will go. Even with the loose USB uh, supportive and stuff. Oh wow, that was a really bad attempt to able to get the mushroom by itself. Even though no, I'm pretty sure that um, we still need to able to actually require a no damage run obviously when it comes to this particular level itself and I'm doing very bad, yeah. Especially it doesn't help how the fact that if you accidentally uh, hold down the dash button and stuff like that, whenever you're trying to able to climb down the ladders, Jesus Christ, it reminds me of like a slippery a slippery ladder syndrome because even then, uh, you'll drop down so fast, quite frequently, and as a result, if you instantly drop down with the actual ladder itself, just like New Forms, if you ever let go of the ladder, in New Forms have been the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, uh, if you didn't uh, hang on to the ladder for long enough, then you're probably able to actually just fall off and just take a death, obviously. So even then, it's kind of like that. So anyways, I think I can get that, you son of a gun. <sighs> oh well, let's just see how this will go, even by the forms of this run, and I just got hit by this really un unpredictable dodging for that mummy me himself, and let's just go, and I screwed over again, so... Oh, that was very annoying. Even by the forms of the uh, towards at the very end, so... I was expecting this level might be a bit easy, but... It might be very difficult at the same time, just because of that... You know, two things you need to worry about. By the forms of the actual, like... Uh, Poyo, uh, Cliff, uh, Dragon, uh, or in this case a Dragonade, uh... Type of, uh, mini boss, or in this case the actual boss. Or even especially noticeable with the forms of the Mummy Me itself. So, yeah, you could probably get a drill for that point. So, let's try this again for the fourth time. But then, yeah, I probably wasn't expecting to see how this will go. So, anyways, just hopefully I can. You gotta be kidding me. It's so, it's so hard to dodge this, this guy sometimes. Because, not only because it leads you to the forms of the most narrowish uh, parts as possible with the actual level itself. But it's also because of how the way the fact of the matter is, is the fact that if you don't have that enough room to be able to actually escape from those kinds of stuff like this, um, you know, there's no way you can be able to, uh, to predict to be able to actually just go ahead and just proceed forward. But I digress. Oh wow, we're actually almost there towards the end of the level actually, because we, are, well, we already know by the fact of the matter is, is that this is one of the first uh, Dragon Age levels that we have to do with for this point, and uh, basically that's all we can come uh, come by. So even then, uh, we have to. Oh, that was very unpredictable right there from the start. And uh, I don't think I've got enough coins to able to actually just to complete the mission. I don't think, but we'll just see what happens there. We'll definitely see what happens there. All right. So naturally speaking, even though if I accidentally complete the level itself, then I might as well be able to do the level again and just trying to do the proper mission that way. So, there we go. I think this might be actually be the final time we're going to be seeing him. Well, unless if we're able to decide to do a Pixel Toad hide and seek levels and stuff like that. So, yeah, there's the power star. So, let's go ahead and stand. What? What? That is so unbelievable when it comes to my previous attempt on this because um, not only do you able to actually just go ahead and grab the power star before the forms of uh, whenever the Dragonator is managed to get its own defeat, uh, you need to able to wait for a little bit until whenever the power star is fully dropped and then also you need to able to avoid the actual mummy me at the very end because as you can see it's still ongoing. So. You saw in my early run of this that I've managed to able to actually did this level just fine, but I didn't catch the power star. So if that's the case, then yeah, it's pretty embarrassing at the end. But luckily though, I did that successfully this time around though, so that's the only good thing. So yeah, it says 170 coins on here, so 
Yep, you truly deserve it from that point, Mummy Me, in case if you've been very curious about this. And let's just say we're mostly able to go for the final three levels at this point, and this is going to be normally takes place in the forms of the memories for our adventures. Mainly, this is going to be evolving around the very beginning portion in each episode. See, for then, like, let's just say we've got episode 1, 2, and 3, and those all three are prologues. So, even then, uh, let's go back to the past and go into episode 1 prologue. See, for then, this is what you normally happens if you ever first time playing the game. If you manage to, like, start off the game off, if you ever play this on the Wii U, the 3DS, or the Nintendo Switch versions, so you probably already know about this level actually, especially noticeable how the fact that in every single bonus objective in these kinds of levels are very simple. Basically we need to find the golden mushroom for every single prologue of the levels. So very simple self-explanatory right there and even though it's kind of weird at the same time because you know how the fact that we've already basically defeated the Wingo, like let's say about uh, twice in the actual game itself and you still realize how the fact that the Wingo was still existence because obviously this is the beginning of the forms of each and every single episodes so yeah you probably get the actual points of itself so obviously I'm showing the actual cinematics um, again in, in, if you those if you actually missed that out so unless if you ever watched the beginning portion of this particular let's play so even then though no, that makes it very very obvious for this point so Anyways though, as far as episode 2 prologue is concerned, um, well we're still able to actually take control of the forms of uh, Captain Toad for the most part though, because, you know with the forms of uh, the Mummy Me at the, uh, the Poyo Puff Peak, that might actually be the last level to actually play as uh, Toadad, at least for now in this particular game itself, because the majority at the very end is going to be most likely focusing on Captain Toad himself, so even then, Expecting that will be happening, so even then though that, um, yeah, we're able to actually no longer be playing Toadette for the majority at the very end, because obviously we have done with her. Well, not exactly just yet though with this Let's Play, because obviously we still got extra content among the way, especially noticeable with the uh, Pixel Toad Hide and Seek minigame and stuff, in the forms of in every single level, except the bonus, bonus book stages, so... Yeah, you get the drill for this point, so... Anyways, though, there's Captain Toad once again gonna get take off by the forms of the Wingo here, and Toadette is, you know, up to her uh, mission to go for this point, so... Well, for her adventure, for... I would say for the first time, actually, because I really can't guarantee by the fact that uh, when it comes to spin-offs and stuff, that won't be counted for, but even then, though, this is actually a, you know... I think I've already mentioned about this like several times already from the past. So now let's move on to episode three, the final prologue stages. And once we deal with all of those uh, levels, especially noticeable that um, obviously there's no gems to collect. Obviously, just like in forms of the Toad Brigade levels, especially noticeable with the Mummy Me levels, because we are essentially done with gem collecting. So even then, though, assuming if you ever played this on the Wii U. Uh, you know, the maximum amount of gems you can only get is the forms of 192. And, um, if you ever play this on the Switch version and the 3DS version, uh, it normally gives you, like, 204 gems to collect. So, very noticeable differences here and there, but usually that's all that usually matters. So, anyways, uh, there's, uh, you know, Wingo for the third time in a row, so... Well, it's actually the sixth time, actually, to see him in action. Well usually becomes its evil schemes and stuff, and, um, yeah, that was it, that was it for the pro lock levels, so, now, if you're ever able to actually complete all of the main levels throughout the game, excluding the forms of the bonus book levels, you probably realize there's actually another page of the actual bonus book, because if you do manage to collect all the gems, especially with the missions being accomplished, and especially with the power stars themselves, slash power moons on the Switch version and the 3DS version, and the green stars at the same time, in the forms of in the Wii U version, you were able to unlock the true final level in the game, and it usually says on the next page is the forms of keep on tracking Captain Toad, and this way it actually leads us to the true final level in the forms of in this entire game, Nazi forms of Mummy Me Maze Forever, which is basically 
are, you know, the endless goblins of mazes. So, we'll probably mention about this in the next video, because for right now, I'm assuming we have to end things off at this point right there. So, yeah, join me next time, and let's play Captain Toad Treasure Tracker for the Nintendo Wii U, Nintendo 3DS, and Nintendo Switch. It's the fact that we're going to be doing the forms of the final main level of the game, excluding the other three, once we're able to complete those levels, which is the forms of Mummy Me Maze Forever. So yeah, see you guys then. Later, fellas.